and welcome to this week's episode of Duck Chatter. On this week's episode, we're going to be discussing this past duck season. I got Rick here. He's going to go over a few things and a few points that uh, he considered the lackluster season reasons, and then I'm going to give, go over some points and stuff that I wrote down. Anyway. Okay, so, you know, I've talked to you guys before about this, but the rest areas are affecting our duck hunting dramatically. Um, and I, I can't say that it's really a bad thing because it does protect the ducks and it allows us to have more ducks in the future. So, but anyhow, I like to uh, address it like it was a piece of pie. Back in the 80s and 90s, we had the whole piece of pie. We might not have had the duck numbers that we have now, but we had more ducks in the state that were huntable ducks that we could actually uh, do something with. So let's start with a piece of pie. And you've got more hunting in Canada now. Uh, and you know, they have a, a pretty big season and it's pretty liberal. And so I think they get a little piece of our pie and uh, don't have any problem with that. But then as you come down, you've got federal and state uh, rest areas and private rest areas and each one of those get a piece of pie. So uh, let's just take the federal ones. You know, in every state, they have federal rest areas. And each time, uh, you know, the, the ducks stay on the rest areas instead of coming to the place where you want to hunt them. So I've talked to people in, in different states and, you know, they say the same thing, we got fewer ducks. So as they come down further towards Arkansas, you know, we, we've got, again, state, federal, and uh, private rest areas. And the private rest areas, there, there are more and more of those. And they're really hurting our hunting. So I've talked to some different people and they say, well, I went out to a field today. And when we got out there, we jumped up 5,000 ducks. He said there were ducks everywhere. And we set up, expected them to come back and we stayed there to almost noon and none came back. So it's kind of what I'm saying, you know, the rest areas, each one of the rest areas takes a piece of our pie. And what those ducks are doing is they're feeding at, at night. And then during the day, they're going back to the rest areas. Here again, I'm going to say one more time. I'm not saying the rest areas are bad. I'm just saying they do take ducks uh, away from the, the duck hunter. So anyhow, we'll go on to the next thing and Jonathan's gonna talk about that. I'm gonna say the biggest thing this year was weather and lack of. Um, most of the year, um, at most points you could have wore a t-shirt a lot of the hunts. The, it was warm throughout the year. I think we had ice one time uh, that was about a half inch thick. And because of the ice and that cold front that we had, we did have some birds push in, but Throughout the season, the birds that were here were stale. I'm talking bad stale. Uh, you couldn't call at them much. Um, they just would do the flying around thing. And that's not just where we were hunting at. Speaking to other hunters that come in, retuning duck calls and thing, it was just a thing that was going on throughout the state. Lack of birds, and most of them hung up north. And like right now, the weather we're getting right now today and the rest of this week is supposed to be really cold and freezing up everything. If we'd have got this, say, early December, it would have set us up for a lot better waterfowl season if we would have had some water to hold them here. Because if you don't have the water, for sure, even if you get the cold weather, they're gonna go on by and find some water. And that's a fact. Yeah, uh, you know, that's a good point. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is water. You know, uh, at the first of the season, we had a, a little, right before season we had a little minor river flood and it may or may not have got out of the banks but it was just a minor flood so we had a little bit of water to start with but didn't have the weather like Jonathan was talking about and then uh, you know a little bit uh, later in this year like about two weeks ago we had another small uh, uh, right as season was going out a small river flood wasn't a major river flood but what happens is in Arkansas, if the river floods uh, and it pushes water out, 
there's a lot of places that the ducks can get that you can't get to them. I don't care if you've got a helicopter. I don't care what kind of boat you got. They're just, they're ungettable. So up and down the river, you know, about every 10 miles, there may be a group of 10 to 20,000 ducks and they'll, they'll bunch up in, in those groups and you can't get to them. So, I mean, it's kind of like rest areas, but the, the main thing is they're flying down here and they're in Arkansas and they're huntable ducks. So, uh, I don't know, John, what do you think? Well, another thing about when the river floods out, for one, it increases habitat, which is key. And number two, it increases food. I mean, it pushes out all kinds of food and vegetation that floats and they gets up into stuff that's been dry and it's fresh so they can get in there and dabble. You know, they can land in the deep water and swim out into the shallow water and dabble in that stuff. And that's a big, big thing. And that's why you hear follow the crest of a river. That's because them ducks will follow that crest because all that fresh water and fresh food. Yeah. A lot of times the weather conditions uh, have, they go in cycles. So there'll be a cycle of a year, sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes four, you know, but that it'll be cold and we'll have ice uh, by the bunches and then uh, you'll go and for the last three years, I mean, we haven't broke any ice. So, you know, that really hurts. So the, the thing duck hunters need, you know, they need a good number of ducks uh, to fly down to begin with, uh, but they need weather, uh, the cold weather, and they need water. So, you know, I don't guess you can ever make a duck hunter happy, but <laughs> there are several reasons that we're not having a good duck season. One more thing, uh, you know, I don't know if, uh, I don't even remember what they called it, but they had straight line winds up in, uh, I'm gonna say through, I know through Iowa and through a couple of those places that blew a lot of the corn down. You know, uh, I, I'm not really sure if that kept ducks above us or not, and another thing that, that people talk about is uh, Oklahoma and Kansas, you know, the Central Flyway picking up more ducks. So, you know, it's just, there's a lot of things taking a piece of pie out of our pie that gives us less ducks to hunt. And uh, I got some talking points here from the uh, Arkansas Game and Fish Commission just on duck report numbers from this year. January waterfowl report, mallards typically account for 59% of the state's ducks. Well, this year during the January count, there was only 44% of mallards in the state. And then also the midwinter survey, second lowest formal, since formal surveys began in 2009, 2010. So bird numbers were definitely down. I know we definitely noticed lot less mallards. We shot a lot of gadwalls this year, which is uh, not normal, and we shot a lot of teal, widgeons, and uh, pintails. So we didn't see a whole bunch of mallards the times we went. But you gotta do the best you can with what you got. And uh, you know, I'm not sure that, and I'm not saying that we need to, I'm just saying I'm not sure that a 45 day season uh, for a couple of years might not help our situation, you know, and, and then lower the uh, lower the uh, limit so that, you know, you don't put quite as much pressure on the ducks that are here. And I'm not saying that that would work. I'm just saying that it's something they might consider. And I think it might help give us more quality hunting on the hunts that we do have. Yeah. The thing that we do need to talk about, our ducks are getting smarter. Uh, and I'd like to know, uh, I think they are. Uh, what do you think? It's very possible. They start to act more and more like snow geese for sure. Yeah. So back when the uh, spinning wings came out, you know, ducks, you know, they'd come to it from half a mile away. I mean, they'd try to land on it. Uh, now then, you know, I'm not going to say they don't work, but they don't work nearly as effectively as they used to. Mm -hmm. uh, the ducks seem to be, to me, just a little bit uh, harder to call. Uh, where I hunt, it's a pretty good sized hole and the ducks will be flying around and you can call them, get their attention, get them over there. And they're circling, they're thinking about it. And if everything looks right, you know, they may or may not come in. 
but if you overcall, you know, if you try to try to bump them over here and then try to bump them over there, and then when they come back around here, bump them again, uh, they're usually, they don't really flare out, but they just make a circle and kind of ease off. You know what I'm saying? So I had better luck only calling when I had to, if I thought I was gonna lose the ducks. You know, I'd call to get their attention, and when they started circling, uh, as bad as I hated to, as much as I like to call, I'd leave my call in the pocket mm -hmm. until I felt like I was gonna lose them. And at that point, you've got about a uh, one second window to call them and get them back. But, I know as far as our hunting this season, that was a real big key. Water movement, uh, decoy spread, basically get it as most realistic and lifelike looking that you could because the calling, like he's saying, you had to like be easy with them because they didn't want much calling because most of the birds that were here were stale. So it was a lot less calling and just more water movement and making it look as real as possible. Yeah. The, uh, you know, that's the thing about it. Uh, you know, when you shoot the stupid ones and the smart ones go back and breed again, they're breeding smarter, smarter ducks, I think. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> But over, over a period of years, I think they're getting smarter, and uh, I'd like to know some facts on that. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, well, one thing that we need to do is we do need to thank our sponsors. Yeah, we definitely want to thank our sponsors. Drake Waterfowl Systems, Excel Bolts, Mud Buddy Motors, Apex Ammunition, Higdon Outdoors, and Rob Roberts Custom Gunworks. So guys, we'll see you next time on Duck Chatter. Thanks for watching. Good